See there? Very sensitive around the grid of the 4D32 output tube. So this is here, here D-Lab in the Radio Shack Situation Room with a Johnson Viking 1 transmitter causing all kinds of problems to the point I'm almost ready to throw in the towel. Let me show you what's going on. Alright, so I was actually preparing this Viking 1 to be shipped back to the owner and I thought, you know, I better give this thing a final test. And when I did, it gave me a nasty surprise. So over here is my realistic DX150B receiver. We're going to monitor the output of the Viking 2. So just to get to the quick of it, what the problem is, is there's some terrible noise on the transmit signal. Now I have already changed all the filter caps, all the groundings complete, push to talks installed, but this problem is not only there when you transmit, it's also there when you spot with the VFO. So the plot thickens. Let me show you what's going on. All right, at this point, I'm not transmitting. I'm just going to take the CW phone switch, go to CW, and that's when you would spot on your receiver. I have a VFO hidden back there. You can't see it. And of course, we have the DX160, I'm sorry, 150B monitoring. Okay, so listen. Hear that? So I thought, man, that's pretty crazy. But then I thought, oh, wait a minute. I don't have the bottom cover installed. So maybe that is letting some RF dance around in here. So let's put the bottom cover on. So now I have the bottom cover installed. It's kind of funny, a Viking 1 needs a full bottom cover, but the Viking 2 doesn't. <laughs> All right, so we're fired back up. Let's go back over to spot position for the VFO. You can hear it. Still a little bit of noise, but nothing compared to what it was. Now watch when I transmit, okay? Back into CW. Yeah, so that's not good. Let's try it in phone. Oh yeah. It's got a nice audio, but it's got a nice buzz. So what's the deal with that, guys? All right, so I was poking around in here, trying not to get poked, <laughs> and I made a little discovery. Obviously, we have trapped RF inside of the chassis, right? Because when you transmit and the higher level RF is trying to go out the antenna, some is getting back in to the final tube. And here's where I think it is, right? So let's go back to uh, spot position. Now watch when I do this. See there? Very sensitive around the grid of the 4D32 output tube. So this is your buffer cap, feeds through these little guys and goes direct to the grid. And right now, I do not have it even in spot position. And listen, see there? That grid picks up my hand and we're not even feeding it any grid current at this point. So there's a lot of sensitivity right here and I think that's the root of the problem. So I need to stop these stray AC fields and RF energy from getting to that grid when it shouldn't be there. So here's what I came up with. So I believe what Johnson was doing when they had their TVI kit was trying to stop that RF from coming out of the RF tube and back into itself, right? Little RF feedback, okay? Well, I'm gonna up the game. So I've built this cage, okay? This cage is approximately three inches square and it's gonna go right over the base of the 4D32 tube socket, okay? I'm gonna cut some ovals here to clear wiring. I'm gonna have a hole here for the power to come in off of this little RFC choke. And I'm gonna take some sheet metal screws and affix this thing right against the chassis. Over here, there's gonna be another slot, a little oval, to clear those caps coming off of the buffer cap, okay? If you think of a Johnson Valiant or Ranger, 
they did the same thing on their uh, band switch where the grid feed goes over to the output tubes they had a shield I wonder why that is so that's what gives me this idea I'm gonna try it and let's see if it works alright there's my little RF cage in place I just used two little sheet metal screws right now to hold it but everything clears looks pretty darn good I'm gonna vacuum out my metal shavings and we'll try it out All right, it's retest time there's my VFO try the plate nope no good let's see where the sensitivity is now all right that sensitivity is still in the same spot it's that coil though it's inducing in on that stupid coil so I think what I'm gonna do if there's room I'm gonna swing that coil inside of my new little cage all right I've got that coil in the cage now so hopefully it won't be exposed to this external noise if this doesn't work guys I think I need to phone a friend all right so remember I had sensitivity here whether or not the VFO was on now if I turn it on yeah we got some noise a little bit around the buffer cap but around here it's minimal compared to what it was around that wire so let's put the bottom on and see if the problem goes away here we go VFO time not too bad quiet as can be look what I'm touching here huh? So we may still have some leakage there, but the question is, when I transmit. Nope. That's phone. CW. Don't know what to tell you. So I was told it would be a good idea to try it in the cabinet, fully assembled. Here's my VFO signal. Lovely. Yeah, that helped. All right, RF engineers, it's your time to chime in. As for me, I give. I have spent way too much time troubleshooting this radio, and obviously Johnson did too, because they came out with the Viking 2, and all the problems went away. So the Viking 1, in my opinion, no good.